Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today is the fourth day of our novena in preparation for the installation of our new Archbishop. And today, we reflect on the hierarchical structure of the Church, the ministry of the Church to serve, and to evangelize peoples. Today also is the last day of our novena in honor of Our Lady of Antipolo. Today is the last day of her visit to the Manila Cathedral. And today is the 395th anniversary of her arrival to the Philippines. And so, let us gather all our prayers and praises in this Eucharist. Let us prepare ourselves by humbly acknowledging our sins and by begging God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose will it is that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, look upon your abundant harvest and be pleased to send workers to gather it, 
that the gospel may be preached to all creation, and that your people, gathered by your word of life and sustained by the power of the sacraments, may advance in the path of salvation and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. To my shame, I say that we were too weak. But what anyone dares to boast of, I am speaking in foolishness. I also dare. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they children of Israel? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I am talking like an insane person. I am still more, with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, far worse beatings, and numerous brushes with death. Five times at the hands of the Jews I received forty lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I passed a night and a day on the deep, on frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, dangers from robbers, dangers from my own race, dangers from Gentiles, dangers in the city, dangers in the wilderness, dangers at sea, dangers among false brothers, in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights, through hunger and thirst, through many frequent fastings, through cold and exposure. And apart from these things, there is the daily pressure upon me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Who is led to sin, and I am not indignant? If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From all their distress, God rescues the just. From all their distress, God rescues the just. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard. And from all his distress, he saved him. From all their distress, God rescues the just. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and decay destroy, 
and thieves break in and steal, but store up treasures in heaven where neither moth nor decay destroys nor thieves break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. The lamp of the body is the eye. If your eye is sound, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be in darkness. And if the light in you is darkness, how great will the darkness be? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us in our Gospel today, where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. This means that what we consider as important, what we consider as valuable, what we consider as precious in our life, there, we give our whole self, we give our attention, our strength, all our efforts, we give our time, we give the whole of our life. Kung ano yung itinuturing nating mahalaga sa ating buhay, doon natin ibinibigay, ang buo nating panahon, oras, pagkatao dahil mahalaga iyon para sa atin. And in our first reading today, it is very evident where St. Paul's treasure is. St. Paul enumerates the many sufferings and hardships he had to endure for the spread of the gospel of Jesus. Great labors, imprisonments, beatings. He was shipwrecked. He was stoned. He passed a night and day on the, on the deep. Frequent journeys, dangers from rivers, from robbers, from Gentiles, dangers in the city, in the wilderness, at sea, dangers among false brothers. He had many sleepless nights. He suffered hunger and thirst, frequent fastings, cold and exposures. Why? Why did he endure all this? All because of the gospel. All because he wanted the gospel of Jesus to be known by all. That is St. Paul's treasure. And so because the gospel of Jesus was so valuable to him, he was ready to face all sufferings and hardships. He gave his whole life for this cause, for this mission of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus. Kitang-kita rin po natin yan sa ating buhay. Kung ano yung itinuturing nating mahalaga sa ating buhay, tingnan ninyo, dyan nauubos ang oras at panahon natin. Kung ano yung itinuturing nating mahalaga sa ating buhay, paglalaanan talaga natin ng panahon. Kahit busy tayo, hahanapan natin ng panahon dahil mahalaga sa atin. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, on the fourth day of our novena, 
as we prepare for the installation of the new Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Jose Advincula, we reflect on the hierarchical nature of the Church. The Catholic Church is hierarchical in nature. There is a hierarchy. Many times when we talk of hierarchy, what comes to mind is position. Hierarchy. Ibig sabihin, mga posisyon yan. May pinakamataas, may susunod, no? hanggang sa pinakamababa. But you know, the image of hierarchy in the Catholic Church is not going up. No? Kasi minsan ganyan yung pananaw natin. No? Magtatanong kayo sa aming mga pare, Father, kailan ka magiging Monsignor? Monsignor, kailan ka magiging Bishop? Bishop, kailan ka magiging Cardinal? Cardinal, baka ikaw na ang maging Pope. Pataas. Parang promotion. But in the Catholic Church, hierarchy is not going up. The movement of hierarchy in the Church is going down. If you are given more positions in the Church, it means you have greater responsibilities. You will serve more. You have to widen your service to others. Habang binibigyan ka ng posisyon, lalo kang bumababa. That is why the Pope is called the servant of the servants of Christ. Pinakamababa sa simbahan. Dahil pinaglilingkuran niya ang lahat. We pray for our new Archbishop, Cardinal Advincula, that he may truly serve, that he may truly become like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. For that is the mission of each one of us in the Church of Jesus. If we look at service as treasure, then we will not look at ourselves as lords and gods. Kapag ang mahalaga ay paglilingkod, kahit nasa ang posisyon ka, maglilingkod. Kung mahalaga ay paglilingkod, kahit wala kang ang posisyon, maglilingkod. Pero kung ang mahalaga sa iyo ay posisyon, hahanapin mo na ikaw ang paglingkuran. And so let us check in our church, as members of the church, in this hierarchical church, what do we consider as our treasure? My dear brothers and sisters, today we also check ourselves what do I treasure in life? What do I consider as valuable and important in my life? What am I willing to suffer for? Where is my heart? Jesus tells us today, where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Nasaan ba ang puso mo? At kung nasaan ang puso mo, yan ang kayamanan na itinuturing mo. May we consider God as our only treasure so that our heart may always be in Him. Please stand. Jesus challenges us to store up treasures in heaven rather than earthly treasures. 
Let us set our hearts on heaven as we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may free men and women from the slavery of materialism by constantly teaching the values of the Kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That politicians and civil leaders may initiate programs and projects for the integral development of society and its constituents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people who are entrusted with great wealth may realize their status as stewards rather than absolute owners of the goods they possess. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are deprived of the things of this world may realize the beauty of setting one's heart on heavenly treasures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who suffered and died in faith may gain their heavenly reward. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, your love for us never changes or fades away. Give us the courage to walk in your presence all the days of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the face of your Christ, who handed himself over as a ransom for all so that through him, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name may be exalted among the nations, and in every place a single offering may be presented to your majesty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. We acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, Thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now all together pray the prayer of gratitude for the gift of our new Archbishop. Lord Jesus Lord Christ, Jesus Christ good, good Shepherd and High Priest, we, we praise you and offer you our, our sincere, sincere gratitude for calling Cardinal Jose Advincula to serve as our Archbishop. May he lead us as a loving Shepherd who cares for his flock and seeks out the lost sheep. May he be for us a gentle and listening father, a faithful teacher and a steward of your sacred mysteries. Grant him health, strength and wisdom. Strengthen the bonds of unity among us, your priests and faithful in our archdiocese, so that we may serve you as one body. Purify us and sustain us in charity, for your love for us never fails. Grant that the faithful of our local church may boldly answer your call to mission. You who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us also pray the ninth day of Novena in honor of Our Lady of Antipolo. Mahal na ina at reyna ng mag-anak na Pilipino, ang aming pag-iibigan ay salamin ng pag-ibig ng Diyos sa amin. Ipanalangin mo kami na aming makamtan ang dakilang pag-ibig na katulad ng sa iyo at sa iyong anak. Ihilig mo ang aming puso sa mga bagay na makapagdadala sa amin sa pagkakamit ng kayamanang walang katapusan. At gayon din naman, ipagkalob mo ang ninanasa namin at hinihiling dito sa pagsisiyam na ito, kung ito'y ukol sa kapurihan ng Diyos at kagalingan ng kaluluwa namin. Amen. I've, I mentioned at the beginning of the Mass that this day will be the last day of the image of Our Lady of Antipolo here at the Manila Cathedral. And today is a significant day because on this very day, 395 years ago, the image of Our Lady of Antipolo, now enshrined at the Antipolo Cathedral in Antipolo City, the image arrived in the Philippines from Acapulco on this very day. 395 years ago. And to our surprise, 
the Bishop of Antipolo allowed that this original image may come to the Manila Cathedral today. And so she is coming. The original image will be here for the 12.10 in the afternoon Mass. There will be a reenactment of the canonical coronation of the image of Our Lady of Antipolo. The last time that the original image of Our Lady of Antipolo was in the Manila Cathedral was 95 years ago, 1926. And we do not know when it will happen again. And so we are privileged, we are graced by God that today that original image will visit us, will come home to the Mother Church of the Philippines, the Manila Cathedral. And so please join us later in our Mass at 12 o'clock and be part of this historic occasion of Our Lady of Antipolo's visit to the Manila Cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We stand before the grand horizon, 500 years of faith, grateful to we bear the gift of Asia, totally yours we gave ourselves, faithfully yours until the end, to your mission, Lord, we give our yes.